I'm really interested in researching drawing and the role and the value of drawing in the creative process and also in the communication, in the process of connecting with people within your own communities and to look at problem solving through drawing. Recently I travelled to Atabaliko, which is in the mountains in Timor-Leste. It's a remote, quite impoverished community. They have very little access to things related to the visual arts and particularly to creative education. I was really interested to try out a creative thinking workshop, which I had developed as part of my PhD. And I had been conducting this with the undergraduates in the design school at Western Sydney University and I was interested to see how this would go for this community in Hatabaliko. The workshop's been designed to provide a way in to telling stories, to communicating and connecting with the community, and to find out what are the big issues that are facing some of the people within these communities. We need to use our creative thinking. The workshop was conducted at Hatabalika High School, but it was actually attended by a wide range of students and their teachers. Now the workshop was based around the big issue of climate change, because this is something that this community was experiencing in a real way. So I drew a very basic diagram explaining how climate change works so that they could have some kind of context about some of the bigger issues that we were going to talk about. The workshop begins with a simple squiggle activity. It's just a few random shapes and lines and the task is to find some kind of a picture or resolve it in some way. And then we're going to tell your story. The translator was wonderful. She was able to tell them exactly what they needed to do because this was actually quite foreign to them. So the aim was to find some kind of animal or creature and that this would be a character that they could tell a story and that they could then provide a voice that could talk about some of the issues that were affecting their community around climate change. Once they developed their characters, and some of these were recognisable and others were very imaginative, then we gave them some different equipment. So they had some water-soluble pens and some gouache. They were able to have a bit of a play with tone and line and block out and start looking at highlights. And this was something that many of them had not had a chance to do. Then we gave out some pre-cut out speech bubbles. Some of them were standard speech bubbles and others were angry speech bubbles. We also gave them thought bubbles and this allowed them to have another voice, perhaps a private voice or something that they were thinking they didn't necessarily want to say out loud. It's interesting that there was a lot of writing in these speech bubbles which was something that I wasn't used to. So there was a lot of things that they wanted to say. So what was really lovely was how the older teachers and the older students helped some of the younger people think about their stories. Once they had completed their stories, we put it on the wall and then they were invited to come up one by one and present their story. So most of the stories were about the animals that were familiar to them, like cows and goats, and how there wasn't enough food or water. And then we had some much bigger issues to do with the crops failing, gathering seeds so that they would have seeds for the next year. So what was interesting for me was the level of depth of their thinking. Their stories were really stories of life and death. They were things that were really affecting them daily. Whereas of course, when you're working with Australians who have access to a lot of equipment and have a very strong voice, their issues and their problems are not quite the same. I'd love to go back 
because I think that drawing and storytelling and giving people a voice is a way for them to develop their own identity and it's a way for them to have some individual creative thinking for themselves and to develop a way of looking at the world in a different way.